Today we're gonna see step by step how to build a good diversified investment portfolio on a budget. You'll have three options to choose from, a simple, an intermediate, and an advanced portfolio, which I tell you exactly which index funds to select. I'm gonna walk you through every important step you need to take to build it and grow it successfully over time, and this portfolio will cost you almost no work to maintain, becoming a money machine for you and your children. Beside this, I'm also gonna give you free access to many tools of mine that we're gonna explore in this video and that are going to help you during your investment journey. My name is Rick, welcome to my channel guys. If you're interested in finance and investing and want to hear it from the finance twin of Manu Ginobili, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the ring bell for future videos. So now, let's start with step one. Your portfolio is going to be lazy because you're not going to have to make a lot of effort to get it and maintain it, but still it's going to have to be diversified. And why is that? After all, even Warren Buffett says diversification is protection against ignorance. Well, I'm not saying he's not right. In fact, he is right and get it through your head, we're all kind of ignorant. According to S&P Dow Jones indices, 51.1% of US large cap equity fund managers underperformed the S&P 500 in 2022, despite the fact that the S&P 500 itself fell into a bear market during the same period. There is a guy that commented on a video of mine a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying that it's stupid to diversify and invest 100% in information technology. Why? Because in the last 10 years, the sector had the biggest average annual return of all. Well, yeah. It's always nice to look at the last 10 years, but between 2000 and 2010, it returned negative 7.74% per year for a whole decade. And looking at how pricey the sector is right now, even more than before the crash in 2022, well, I don't know if it's so clever to invest only in this sector. So diversification is gonna reduce your risk because while some assets are gonna fall, others are going to grow. And that's definitely something you need if you want a lazy but successful portfolio. The first thing we're gonna do is calculate how much we need to have in our portfolio in order to be able to retire and withdraw every year the amount that we need for our living expenses without ever running out of money. So try to think about how much you spend on a monthly basis. You're probably gonna have needs like rent or mortgage, groceries, utilities, medical care, and some wants like dining out, shopping, or traveling. You have to come up with a number that you're sure that right now would be enough for all your average expenses in a year. Now, this is the amount that in the future, when you retire, you're going to need to withdraw every year, increasing every year with inflation. So let's say, for instance, that you calculated that your average annual expense is 40,000. If you multiply this value by 25, you get a million dollars, which is how much value your portfolio should have to assure that you will be able to live off it forever. It's called the 4% rule, and if you missed my video on Dave Ramsey two weeks ago, there I explain exactly why 4% is the perfect safe withdrawal rate and not 6, 7, or 8. If reaching a million dollars sounds impossible to you, check this out. I'm gonna give you the link of this table in the description below so that you can download it for free. And what it does is showing you how fast you can reach your goal depending on how much you invest and your time horizon. For instance, let's say that you start with zero, you get around 9% return per year in the stock market, and you manage to invest $500 every month. If your goal is to reach a million dollars, you need around 31 years. And down here, you can see the breakdown of your portfolio growth with the wealth in the middle and how much you have to invest from your pockets on the right. Notice how the compounded interest effect makes it so that at the beginning, even for 10 years, the amount you invest is not so different from the portfolio value. Well, after 20, 30, or even 40 years, the difference become bigger and bigger. Now it's time to assess your risk tolerance. And this depends most of all on how close you are to retirement. If you take the last 100 years, it's clear that the stock market historically has given much higher returns than bonds. So one might say that if you invest for the long term, it's always better to keep 100% investing in the stock market. Nevertheless, the stock market is much more volatile. If you're getting close to retirement, you're not gonna have any income to feed your investments. So if a bad stock market decade comes right after your retirement, you might put yourself in a position of not having enough to allow you to withdraw your living expenses without killing your nest egg. There is no magic formula here. You could hold a percentage of bonds that is equal to your age, minus 10. So for example, if you're 60, you should have around 50% of your portfolio in bonds. And if you want, you can download for free a file that I created on the three fund portfolio, where you can basically write your age and the table gives you automatically how much you should allocate to the US stock market, how much to the international stock market, and how much on bonds. We're not necessarily going to suggest a three fund portfolio in this video, although it's obviously a good and solid portfolio, but you can definitely use this file to check about the bonds and also to see how stocks and bonds performed over the last 
last 25 years. Now it's time to automate. Since we want to create a lazy portfolio that works for us and not the other way around, we need to take emotions and logistics out of the equation. That means that you need to set up automatic transfers from your checking account to your investment account, as well as automate investments within your investing account. If you invest from the US, you can use any brokerage app like Webull, Robinhood, or M1 Finance. While if you invest from Europe, you can use, for example, Trade Republic, which is by the way the one I use. And by using the link in the description below, you're gonna get a free share with a value between five and 100 euros. Now, why are we doing all of this? By automating your money transfers, you achieve two goals. First of all, your long-term investments are not dictated by emotions, which usually play against you because they make you buy high and sell low, and you ensure that the amount of money that you want to invest every month gets out of the way as soon as you get your paycheck. So you're not gonna have the temptation to spend it. This is called pay yourself first. Namely, as soon as you get your paycheck, you think about your savings and investments before thinking about anything else. Investing regularly every month is called dollar cost average method. And it's a quite efficient way of investing because no matter what the ups and downs of the stock market are, you manage to get exactly the average market return in the long term. And you basically smooth out the peaks and valleys created by market volatility. Using this strategy, you You'll buy more shares when prices are low and fewer when prices are high. All right, our portfolio is going to be made of three of the four existing asset classes. So let me give you a little, really, really quick overview. There are basically four different classes. We have cash, equities, fixed income, and alternative investments. The first one is cash. That besides real cash includes investments that can be easily converted into cash, namely short-term debt securities that mature in less than one year, usually within three months. Examples are money market funds, US treasury bills, and certificates of deposit. Equities are shares of ownership of a company, also known as stock, or index funds and ETFs that invest in stocks, which is, by the way, one of the best ways to create wealth and diversify with this. Then we have fixed income securities like bonds. Bonds are basically loans for which you pay the principal by buying them, and then you receive the fixed income, which is the interest payment. And maturity, you get your principal back. And the last one are alternative investments like real estate, precious metals, cryptocurrencies, and so on. Let's get now to the core part of this video, which is the portfolio itself. I'm gonna give you three different options for your portfolio, a simple one, an intermediate one, and an advanced one. But be really careful here, simple doesn't mean bad, just as advanced doesn't mean better. The more advanced your portfolio is going to be, the more you're going to be able to tweak its components and adapt it to your wishes, but at the same time you are more vulnerable to volatility, higher fees, and to your own mistakes. On the other hand, a simple portfolio drives on autopilot, follows the average market return, and is basically guaranteed to give you good returns in the long term. But you don't have so much flexibility because you just have two components. All that said, if you're new to investing, I would strongly suggest you to consider the simple portfolio. If you're already investing and you want a solution that it's not that simple, but also not hard to manage, the intermediate portfolio is for you. If you're one of those investors that like to have many positions because they want to be able to move the weight from one to another whenever they want, and they want to have complete control, you may go to the advanced one. For each of the three portfolios, we're going to use an approach that is called the core and satellite approach. We're going to have a main component of the portfolio and some satellite ones. The core portfolio represents the foundation of your investment strategy and must be a broad-based, well-diversified, low-cost index fund or ETF, such as the S&P 500 or a total market index. This is going to provide stability, broad market exposure, and long-term growth. The satellite components are going to be additional positions that are dependent on your risk tolerance, your interest, and also your age. We're going to count here bonds, whose amount is going to depend on your age, as well as other types of investments like growth ETFs, value ETFs, small or mid-cap, and international. These positions may perform better or worse than the core portfolio and are basically there for you to gain experience, taste the markets, and be in control of what's inside your portfolio based on your preferences. In the three portfolios of this video, I'm not going to mention cash, but you're going to need it for two reasons. One is for emergency expenses, which, believe it or not, are always going to happen. For this, you should have at least six months worth of living expenses in a high yielding savings account, which by the way, now we're giving between four and 5% return per year. So it's actually an investment. But if you manage to have even more cash than that, you can use the rest as a lump sum to invest in the total stock markets or in another position of your portfolio in case of a market crash taking advantage of the opportunity to buy low. The simple portfolio is the first one we're gonna see, and it's gonna be made of just two ETFs. This is gonna be the simplest portfolio you could ever have, and still it's gonna give you a wonderful diversification. The best and biggest position is gonna be VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF. VTI is gonna give you access to almost 4,000 companies, representing the whole American stock market in its entirety, with an expense ratio of just 0.03%, and thanks to fractional shares that allow you to 
buy even just $10 of this ETF, within a couple of bucks you can automatically be an owner of a little piece of all the wonderful companies that make up the American stock market. Next to VTI, we're gonna have BND, the Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund ETF. BND is gonna give you easy access to the whole American bond market, which is a really important component of your portfolio because it's gonna give you stability and fixed income for a ridiculously low expense ratio of 0.03%. Now, the percentage of bonds compared to the total stock market ETF in your portfolio is gonna depend on your risk tolerance and your age. You could have a percentage that is equal to your age minus 10. So for example, if you're 50 years old, you could have like 40% in bonds. But the truth is that there is not a magical number. To help you with rebalancing your portfolio every year based on how the two components grow and also on your age, I prepared for you a Google file that you can get for free from the link in the description below. The second portfolio is gonna be the intermediate portfolio and it's gonna be made of five ETFs. The core position is still gonna be the total stock market with VTI or alternatively VO, which is the S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard. The S&P 500, despite including only the largest and best 500 companies of the American economy and not the whole 4,000, historically grew in the same way as the total stock market, with an average annual return of 10.55% against 10.65% of the total stock market from 1970 to today, considering the underlying indexes. So, Yours is the choice. You honestly don't do anything wrong either way. And as for the percentage, I would see here at least 30% on this core position. Moving to position number two, with around 25%, we're gonna cover the international stock market with an ETF like VXUS, the Vanguard Total International Stock ETF. There are continuous discussions on if a person really needs international stocks or should just focus on the American stock market. Those in favor of an old US portfolio say that the biggest companies of the US economy are indeed international companies because they sell worldwide. And although I do agree with that. I'm not sure I would really consider that as a worldwide diversification because still a big portion of the revenue for most of the S&P 500 companies comes from the US. Now position number three and four with around 20% and 15% are gonna be a growth ETF and a value ETF. Since we're already investing in the total stock market or in the S&P 500 in our core position, obviously these two ETFs are gonna strongly overlap with it. But having these two positions allow you to choose in which part of the market you wanna have more weight. For the growth sector, I suggest to something like QQQ, the Invesco QQQ ETF, which gives you access to the Nasdaq 100 index with 100 great growth companies. I wouldn't want to suggest you a pure technology ETF like VGT because I'm personally quite worried of how technology companies right now are overpriced. You can see what the price to earning ratio of the technology sector looks like, and you can see that it's even higher than before the crisis in 2022. Next to growth, as I said, you can cover value, and you can do that with a nice dividend ETF like VYM, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, which contains around 449 high-yield dividend-paying companies based in the US, excluding REITs. It gives you great exposure to the large value sector with a nice dividend yield of 3.15% per year. Alternatively, I consider VAG and SCHD two great alternatives. The last portion of this portfolio with 10% is gonna be the bond market with BND. Depending on your age, as we discussed before, you should adjust the weight of BND in your portfolio, and obviously, to do this, you're gonna reduce all other positions accordingly. Let's see now the advanced portfolio which as I said at the beginning, is not necessarily better than the two I discussed already. In fact, I would actually suggest trying to keep your portfolio as simple as possible. But still, I wanna give you some inspiration on some other investments with this one. Now, the advanced portfolio is gonna be composed as follows. 25% VOO, covering the large cap American stock market, 20% VXUS, covering the international stock market, 15% on growth, with QQQ and 15% of value with VYM. 10% on bonds with BND, which as I said, should grow the older you get to reduce volatility. 10% is going to mid cap companies through VO, the Vanguard mid cap ETF, and 5% to small cap companies with VB the Vanguard Small Cap ETF. The reason why I'm introducing mid cap and small cap as addition to the S&P 500 is that it's true that in the last 10 years, large cap stocks performed the best, but if we look back at the whole performance since 1994 to today, mid cap returned 11.7%, small cap 10.78%, and large cap only 9.67%. Obviously, keep in mind that the smaller the company is, the higher the volatility the fund is gonna have. If I can give you a last piece of advice, another way of maintaining a diversified portfolio is by investing in target date mutual funds. 
These funds allow you to pick a date in the future as your investment goal, which is usually your retirement date. When you are far away from this goal, the fund invests in riskier assets like stocks and then shifts the portfolio's allocation towards safer assets like bonds or cash as you get closer to your goal. The expense ratio is going to be a little higher, but these funds are going to be a great idea for people who are looking for more of a set it and forget it approach. I really hope I could give you some value with this video guys. If I did, remember to subscribe to the channel because you're gonna find a lot of videos about ETFs, investing and personal finance. And you're also gonna get this content from the twin of Manu Ginobili, which is no small thing. Anyway, thank you for watching until the end guys. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful evening and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.